Now, tonight on BBC Two, you can see a documentary called Escape from Dubai, The Mystery of the Missing Princess. She's Sheikha Latifa bint Mohammed Al Maktoum, the daughter of the ruler of Dubai. Earlier this year, she made a video explaining why she was planning to leave home. My father is the Prime Minister of UAE and uh, the ruler of Dubai. He has uh, three daughters called Latifa. I'm the middle one. So I'm not allowed to drive. I'm not allowed to travel or leave Dubai at all. I can't. I haven't left the country since 2000. Uh, I've been asking a lot to, just to go traveling, to study, to, to do anything normal. They, they don't let me. We have assigned drivers. We're not allowed to get into anyone's car. I have to go with the driver. The driver has to know exactly where I am. That's my life, basically. It's very restricted. My father, he has this image of so modern. It's just PR. Well, three weeks later, she and her close friend, Tina Yahuhan, began their escape. They drove to Oman, and with the help of a French businessman who'd been accused of being a spy in Dubai, boarded a yacht with the intention of sailing to Goa, and from there, fly to America. Well, off the coast of India, the boat was attacked, and Latifa was seized. She has not been seen since, and I'm joined by Tina. Tina, how did you become friends with Sheikh Latifa? Um, I was Latifa's capoeira teacher. Um, capoeira is a Brazilian martial art, so Latifa contacted me end of 2010, and she obviously didn't tell me who she was, but she was asking for private classes. So I started teaching her. So how aware were you then of the kind of restrictions she claims were imposed on her as a member of Dubai's royal family? If she was free to do martial arts, you you used to do skydiving together. Well, initially, um, I wasn't aware of all the restrictions. But as I got to know her better, I realized that she wasn't even allowed to come and uh, visit me. I, she wouldn't be allowed to go in my car. There was a lot of restrictions. We were able to meet in only certain places in Dubai, such as um, the family-owned uh, facilities or the skydiving club. What did she tell you about her previous attempts to escape? Um, basically, um, she told me that the reason for her escape was to get help for her sister Shamsa. And as we know, Shamsa had previously escaped in the UK and she was kidnapped and brought back to Dubai, where she was sent to prison. So in 2002, Latifa escaped to go and get help uh, for Shamsa. And uh, she thought that even if she would get caught, at least then she would be put in the same prison with Shamsa and she would get to be with her sister. Why did you agree to help her escape? Um, Latifa is my best friend. Um, I had known her for years and she was a reason that I was in Dubai for the last couple of years. So uh, when she asked me to help, I didn't hesitate. I, she's such a kind person, so she deserves to, to have her freedom of choice and freedom of movement, just like any of us, really. How did you make your plan? Um, oh, Latifa had been in contact with um, Hervé Jobert, um, who had written a book about um, his his own experience escaping Dubai. And in 2017 summer, um, Latifa asked me to go and meet Hervé to discuss different plans, how she would be able to uh, to escape. And she asked me to obviously help and, uh, yeah, initially be the one to communicate with Hervé. What was it like? I mean, you you started out in your car with you driving to go to Oman. How frightened were you both when you were driving away? Um, It was sort of a mixture of of excitement and obviously we were a bit scared of of getting caught as well. Um, That that day was something I will never forget. Um, Lati forgot to sit on the front seat of the car for the first time. Um, we were doing something so huge together. It's, I think it was more exciting than, than really scary. Now, Hervé had arranged the boat for you to take. So you 
you got on the boat, you were sailing across to India. How did you realise the boat had been boarded? Um, basically on the night of uh, 4th, 4th of March, uh, it was around 10 o'clock in the evening. We were down in our cabin. Um, I had just brushed my teeth um, and suddenly we started hearing noises from the upper deck. It uh, sounded like gunshots. Um, it sounded like there were a lot of men shouting loud noises. How do you think you've been tracked? Um, it's there, there are obviously many theories, um, but Sheikh Mohammed being such a powerful leader and with the help of um, India um, and obviously any surveillance equipment, um, we saw um, this search and rescue planes above us uh, two days prior to the attack. So which two powerful nations, you know, they are capable of doing what they did. So what happened next once these people were on board? Um, well, our cabin started filling with smoke, um, so we had to proceed to the upper deck. We're both really scared. Um, we're holding each other's hands and we walked to the uh, upper deck and on top of the stairs, um, we saw um, Indian special forces, so men in uh, commando outfits with uh, multiple machine guns and laser sights pointing at us. And at that point we were separated. I was pushed to the floor and my hands were tied behind my back and I found myself in a pond of blood. What do you think has happened to Latifa? Well, um, the last time I've seen Latifa, um, she was kicking and screaming when she was taken away. And she said, don't take me back to UAE, rather shoot me here. So that's the last time I've seen her. Um, so I assume uh, she's locked up in, in the UAE. You've had no contact with her No, at whatsoever, all. no. Now, yesterday was her birthday. It was her 33rd birthday. What had she hoped you would both be doing on that birthday? Well, a year ago when I spent um, her birthday, it was actually just two of us. She didn't want to have a party. She said, I want to spend my next birthday in freedom. Um, so obviously yesterday being her birthday, I was feeling very sad but I thought at least I've helped make one of her dreams come true which is letting the world know her story and and tonight more people will know what's really happened to her. What, what had she said to you about the release of the video and and how it should be used? Was she keen that it should go worldwide? And the reason we made the video in the first place was to be released if our escape failed. So she wanted the world to know. It was the instructions she left to, to, to her friends to release the video, to make sure as many people will see it as possible. Well, Tina Yahuihan, thank you very much indeed for being with us this morning. Um, I should say that a source close to the Dubai government is quoted in the documentary as saying Latifa is back with her family. She is doing excellent. And as I said, you can see that documentary on BBC Two tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much.